welcome to game two of Port Jefferson Royals baseball. We're going to have Port Jeff playing against Bayport Blue Point. The first pitch from Luke Filippi, who's going to be your starting pitcher today, is going to be in there for a strike. As McGowan for Bay Point tried to square up a bunt. So, looking at today, we got a good game. Luke Filippi throwing the second pitch. It's going to be high. It's going to count. It's going to be one and one. What an overcast day today. Beautiful day for some baseball, though. Weather's not too cold, not too windy. Next pitch is in. That's going to be, he's going to try to get a curveball in there, but it's a little bit inside for ball two. Lou Filippi gets ready, sets up for the next pitch. Pitches it. It's going to be a ground ball to first. Tommy Yost is going to field it at first and make the play for the first out of the first inning. Next batter for Bay Point is going to be Stemmler, number 18. And Luke Filippi trying to start off his pitching day as best as he can. Trying to start off his season as good as possible. Get, get the Royals a win after yesterday. Ball one to Stemmler. He's getting ready for his next pitch. He's going to throw that one in there. And it's a swinging strike for strike number one. Count one and one. So yesterday obviously wasn't the best day for Port Jeff, but they're looking kind of the bounce back, get a strong performance here. That pitch going to be a little bit outside. It's going to be two and one. Miss a little bit, miss a little bit high and in, or on high and out. Sorry. Next pitch is going to come in. It's going to be a pop. That ball's up. It's looked like it's going to be a caught by the center fielder, but we'll see. That ball drops in center field. The ball's going to come in, and that's going to be a one-out double for Stemmler. Uh, that ball seemed to get a little bit away from Frankie D'Elia in center field. And we kind of see a repeat of what happened last game. We saw the last game, a kind of a, like a lazy fly, kind of get by the outfielder last game. And we're kind of seeing a repeat here this game. Grooney's going to call timeout because Luke Filippi needs... Seems like he needs to tie his shoe. So, so far in this game, uh, I think one of the main keys we're going to see here from Port Jefferson is we need a strong, strong outing from Luke Filippi. We're really going to need, uh, really going to need really sh almost shut down or close to shut down uh, in order for these Port Jeff bats to get across some runs. Last game, they were able to get across four uh, against Shoreham Wayne River. Luke Phillippe gets ready to throw again. First pitch. It's going to be outside. Ball's going to get by Grooney, and Stemmler is going to be able to move from second to third. Uh, it looks like Grooney kind of maybe got crossed up there. So he's just going to make sure he's got the signs perfectly correct with his pitcher. Um, this batter up now for Bay Point Blue Point. It's going to be Shatner. He's going to get a fastball. That ball's going to be hit to the outfield. It's going to, that's going to, that ball's out of there. And that ball is gone. So that's going to point an early 2-0 lead for Bayport Blue Point over Port Jefferson. It got a fastball right in the heart of the plate, and he just took it opposite field over the fence. Not the way you want to start if you're the Port Jeff Royals. But now, just like last game, they're out to an they're down early two to zero. Olsen's now up for Bayport Blue Point. And the first pitch to him was high, a curveball. Luke Filippi's gonna get ready, fire again. That's gonna be a called strike. Right there in the zone, nice little fastball. But he was able to point right there. Look, Filippi fires again. Another fastball, and he seems to be 
Olsen seems to be a little bit behind on this, on, on these fastballs from Filippi. So he just keeps him going back to him. Next pitch, once again. It's going to be another fastball, strike three. So after giving up that home run, Filippi does not look phased, does not look like he took that uh, to the heart. He looks like he was able to battle back and refocus, and he was able to get Olsen with a strikeout. Three, four easy pitches. Next batter we're going to have up is Robertson, number 13. First pitch is going to be a curveball that he tried to get in there, but it was a little bit too high. In for ball one. Flippy fires again. It's going to be strike one on the swing. So kind of like we saw from Halloran yesterday from the Sean Wayne River Wildcats, Flippy, we see kind of the same approach. He's really kind of firing in there uh, really fast. Next pitch is going to be another strike. He's kind of getting back to the mass mound, working very fast. This way you can kind of ride the momentum. It's going to be another pitch. It's going to be fouled out of play. We're in another two-strike count. So if we can see Luke Filippi kind of end this inning quick, and get the bats rolling, be beneficial. And it's going to be a strike three. It was a beautiful curveball. Kind of just went outside. It just was unable to get it there. So that's going to do it for the first half inning for the Port Jeff Royals. Luke Filippi did give up that two-run home run to number seven, the pitcher. And early on in this game, the Royals are down 2-0. But now we're going to see the man who just did hit that home run for Bay Point, Blue Point, Get onto the mound. And we'll see what he's able to do on the mound. Now, last time we did see him, we last time we've seen this player, we've seen him play on some high caliber teams in the offseason. Uh, but we've seen him mainly in the outfield. Now we get to see him on the mound. In the outfield, he was playing all over the place. He was playing a little bit of center. A little bit of left and right. Kind of did it all. Uh, now we'll be able to see him on the mound. And so far for the Royals, the lineup they're going to be putting out there is they're going to start off a little bit similar as yesterday. They're going to start with Natty Mullen hitting first. Luke Filippi at the two-hole. James Grunfelder hitting third. Fourth, we're going to have Tommy Yost. Five, we're going to have Owens. Six, we're going to have Abby Rolf. We're going to have Massimo Cipriano, we're going to have Rory, and then Frankie D'Elia. Those, those will be our batters, and that will be that order for today. And we'll see how they're able to do it. Yesterday, the bats were a little bit slow to begin the game, but they started to pick them up a little later on in the game, near the fifth, sixth inning. They were starting to push across a couple runs. It wasn't a whole lot, but they were able to make yesterday's game more more respectable the score and the final score of that game was 13 to 4 uh, a couple highlights from that game uh, we saw Abby Rolf in her first baseball game in her life remember Abby Rolf coming from softball we were able to see her coming into baseball in her first game she did two RBI single that was her first first her first hit and it was really special to see so now we're gonna see Natty Mullen Seeing the first pitch, it's going to be a strike almost down the middle of the plate. Uh, for a struggling team, uh, for a struggling team, you kind of want to see those bats kind of flying. Can get in there. Natty Mullen's going to look at the next pitch. He's going to swing. It's going to be a foul ball right back here to the fence. That count's going to be quickly 0-2. Shot in the pitches, and it's going to be strike three. Natty thought it was a little bit outside, but the umpire did see strike three. And that's going to be one out for the Royals. Schaltner starting off starting off his game. He was able to hit that home run as we, as we heard before. Now it's going to be a battle. Once again, Luke Filippi up at the plate. It's going to be a battle pitcher versus pitcher. We saw round one go to Schaltner. In the, first, in the top of the inning. Now we'll see 
what Luke Filippi can do back. Next pitch comes in. It's going to be a... F it's looking like a two-seamer that he's really getting in there. And it will be able to s in for a strike. Next pitch is coming in. And that one's going to be outside. Luke Phillip, he's looking to continue on to a strong performance yesterday. Had a couple of hits in that game. That one, he's going to start today off with a single opposite field into right field, and he's going to get on base. He's going to be Port Jeff's first base runner for today. A little bit like yesterday, where Luke Filippi was also the first base runner for the Royals. He gets up and gets on once again. So next up to bat, we're going to see James Grunfelder, your catcher for the Royals. First pitch is going to be in there a little bit outside for cold ball one. Now these, these seniors for the Royals are really going to be your driving points, your main players. The Tommy Yost we saw pitch yesterday, Grooney. That ball is going to be lifted into left. There's possibility of dropping in there, and it just sits up in the air and gets caught for the second out. Luke Filippi gets back to first base. And that ball almost had a chance of dropping. The left fielder was able to get over and make that play for the second out of the inning. Now up to the plate. We have Tommy Yost, number four. And Tommy Yost is playing first base for the Royals today. Yesterday we saw Michael Tesser playing in the first base position. Today we're going to be able to see how Tommy Yost performs. We saw him make that defensive play earlier on in the top of the inning. Let's see what he can do at the plate. First pitch comes in. And that ball is going to be outside for ball number one. Let's see. Yesterday we did see them try and steal with Luke to start. Let's see if they try and do that again. Luke stays put at first. And the next pitch comes in. It's going to be a swinging strike. Tommy digs back into the box. Schaltner ready to throw again. That ball is going to be inside, low. So key for the Royals here is kind of get the offensive rolling early, and then we'll see how he develops, how they can develop and use that momentum later on in the game. Luke Filippi's going to steal. It's going to be a ground ball, little hit and run action, perfectly played for the Royals. So that's going to end up moving Luke Filippi to third base. Tommy Yost is going to stay put at first. And now we have a situation. We have first and third for the Royals with Owens up at bat. That hit and run was played perfectly. That hit and run, Luke, Luke ended up sprinting over to second. That second baseman had to move over to second base. And Tommy perfectly placed that ball grounder, got through the infield and right to the right fielder. So next up to bat, we have Owens. He already saw first pitch, and the first pitch he fouled off to the backstop to start off the count. 0-1. Next pitch coming in. That ball is going to be hot. That ball is going to be high, high and outside. So the second pitch is going to be a ball. It's going to be a 1-1 one, one count. Next pitch comes in. That ball is going to be hit. It's going to get over the shortstop's head. It's going to bring in a run. Luke Filippi is going to score. And for a kid like Owens to be his first RBI as a varsity player, and that's really what you want to see if you're a fan of the Port Jeff Royals. Seeing them get those bats rolling early. See them kind of battling. And the score is now with that Luke Filippi ended up did come in. The score is going to be 2-1. to one In favor of Bay Point, Bayport Blue Point. Next batter we're going to see Abby Rolf. Abby Rolf is going to see first pitch. It's going to be a strike in there. Abby Rolf did get on base yesterday. Her first hit, as I mentioned before, her first hit 
was a two RBI double, a uh, two RBI single. Sorry. Next pitch comes in. She fouls it off. So we'll see if Abby Rolf is able to continue on to a, a good start to the season here. If she was able to get on base, that would be huge for the Royals. Next pitch comes in. A little two-seamer that did come back into inside. And Abby Rolf was able to fight that one off. Fouled it off and go strike two. So Abby Rolf is really battling here. Next pitch comes in. She's going to see it. And it's going to be strike three. Inning over, but not before the Royals were able to put up a run after Owens. After Owens, the freshman was able to hit a ball over the shortstop's head and brought it in Luke Filippi. All in all, that's how you want to start if you're the Royals. You know, yesterday he was really struggling to get in runs. Today was very nice to see that you kind of start the game off early. Able to get a run across in that first inning. Let's start building momentum. So now they're going to get back on defense. And, I mean, you could argue. You could argue that without that, you know, defensive mistake in the beginning of the game that they and this might be a, a lot closer game than what it is. I mean, it, yes, I know it's 2-1. The game is close. But this could be a tie game or maybe maybe the Royals could be up one at this point if if that play was made out in, out in center. Uh, Luke Filippi looking to continue. Other than that, I mean, obviously the home run was hit. Other than that home run, though, other than that little mistake that he that he threw to Schaltner, he I mean he was able he was able to kind of battle back and, and fight, and he was able to put down and retire the rest of the the batters. Now looking here, the next batter we're gonna have up. Is going to be. It's going to be number 16, Clark. First is going to be first pitch is going to be in there for a strike, and Luke Filippi is really trying to put his foot down, really commanding the fastball early, setting up his off-speed pitches later. That's a really good look. That second pitch is going to be high and inside. He was able to check his swing. They they looked over at first, and he did not go. So it's going to be one and one. Next pitch is close. Almost a strike, but it was a little bit outside. In there for ball two. Next pitch is going to be hit into center field. And the play is made in center field for out number one. That was a pretty good read by Frankie. That ball almost dropped in there, but not before... Frankie DeLeo was able to catch the ball for out number one. Up next for Bayport is May, number four. First pitch that May sees is a little bit high, ball one and out. Oh. Next pitch comes in. It's going to be high for 2-0. Oh. Rosen tells Luke Filippi just to slow himself down. An opportunity for him to take a breath. Really just reset himself for this third pitch. And it seemed that deep breath worked because that next pitch he threw it and it was a strike. Makes the count now 2-1. and one. Luke Filippi still working fast as per usual. Next pitch is going to be up. It's going to be popped foul and out of play for now the second strike. And we were able to see after that kind of reset, after that mental reset, we have seen Luke Filippi battle back here and tried to get him with that curveball. But he's unable to. He's trying to hit him with the same pitch that Robertson fell to. But May was not going for it. Next pitch, full count now. That ball's going to be in there for strike three. The second out of the inning. An emphatic strike three call from our umpire here at home plate. 
Next batter is going to be most, number 23, first baseman for Bayport. First pitch coming in to most is going to be fouled off in there for strike one. So we're seeing pretty demanding stuff, unlike yesterday with Tommy Yost. We're seeing pretty demanding stuff, a lot of strikes coming in, and, and, close, and close balls as well from Luke Filippi today, which is kind of contrary to what we saw yesterday with Tommy Yost. That's, that ball is going to be in there for a strike. And he's looking to end this inning on quick here. Yet his batter's back out there so he can build on that momentum. That ball is going to be inside. And this is important. Getting these batters in and out, in and out, kind of just all over the place. is very important. That ball is going to be... He's trying to get that curveball to get down there in time. Unable to. So that's going to be a ball. Next pitch. He tried the other curveball. He gets it in there for strike three. That half of the inning, top of the top of the second is over. Luke Filippi, after giving up that home run in the first inning, looks commanding. He looks dominant, and he looks like the Luke Filippi that we all kind of expected to show up today for the Port Jefferson Royals. So now they're going to try and work back into this game. They are still down 2-1. Charltoner's going to try and stop them up in the on the mound. And so far, we've seen it. Uh, yesterday, I spoke on it a lot. Uh, yesterday, I spoke about how you really wanted to see a lot of quick innings from the pitchers. And then you want your batters to be in. You want your batters to be up for a long time. Uh, what that allows you to do is, I mean, you might, you might not be getting any runs during that period of time. But what it's going to do, it's going to allow you to build momentum. Those, those quick innings. It's going to build momentum. So you're fielders aren't standing in the outfield for 10, 20 minutes at a time like we saw yesterday. Uh, you really cannot build a lot of momentum from them, but what you see today is an entirely different scene. What you see today is Luke Filippi, Luke Filippi commanding the zone and getting the batters out quickly. So the next batter we're going to see up for the Port Jefferson Royals is going to be a right fielder for today. You're going to see Massimo Cipriano. And yesterday, yesterday he was able to get on base. Uh, he got hit by a pitch. He also grounded out. So it's not the, it's not the worst start to the season, but he's looking to build on that here with this at bat. First pitch coming in. He's gonna ground it to the second baseman. He's trying to dig it out, and he is just out at first for the first out. He kind of got jammed on that pitch, kind of a fast, oh, that two seamer. That Schaltner's kind of throwing here. He's throwing that two seamer that's coming into the right handed batters. And what we're seeing there is we're seeing that it's jamming up a lot of these righties. Uh, Massimo fell victim to that pitch and also got jammed as well. Next pitch, next hitter is going to be Rory. Rory's going to hit another ground ball to second base. And first pitch, one pitch is all it takes to get out Rory in that scenario. And almost instantly, the Royals have got two out in the bottom of the second. Next batter is going to be number five, Frankie Delia, your center fielder, who defensively this game has had, I guess you could say, up and down moments. We saw that down moment at the top of the first. And then we saw him make a catch. That pitch is going to be in there for a strike. So that counts one and one. It's going to be important to see. Ooh, he jams him again. So three jams for the Port Jefferson Royals as they're going to get retired in order. One, two, three. And that inning was quick. Schaltner was able to, you know, like I was saying, get those quick outs. He was able to do that against the Royals. And if you're a fan of the Royals, it's not what you really want to see, but you'll you'll do it. You'll take it, and we'll move on now. We'll let Luke Filippi kind of build that momentum.
and we'll, and we'll see how this goes. We'll see how Luke Filippi can keep dominating. We'll see if he can keep dominating, like we saw last inning. That's going to be super important for the Royals, as their offense isn't really... They're not known for their offense this year. Their offense isn't really the best. But we will see is dominant pitching with the likes of Luke Filippi. Uh, although we were unable to see it yesterday, Tommy Yost is a very good pitcher. Uh, Tommy Yost is on his way after this year. He's going to Fairleigh Dickinson University to play baseball. So he's a good player. Uh, after that, we have pitcher, another pitcher, uh, Natty Mullen, who is who who might be a freshman, but he's also a good pitcher. Um, and obviously, you know, like like I said, Luke Filippi started today. I mean, yes, he had a little bit of blemish. Um, half of that was was kind of on him with leaving that fastball down the middle of the plate. Uh, on the other end, uh, you did see that error from the outfielder that made a man go to second base, but. So Luke Filippi here is going to be looking at nine, the nine batter, and then the leadoff. So he's going to be playing. He's going to be pitching against Costa to start it off, number twenty-one, and then we're going back up to McGowan, number three, and then the third batter in this inning will be Stemmler, number eighteen. So we'll see what Luke Filippi is able to do here. It's going to be important that he commands the zone early. This is a nine batter. So usually the thought process with this nine batter is attack, attack, attack. And Luke Filippi, as we've seen already in this game, he is one he is attacking the zone. On uh, that first pitch, it's gonna be lifted out to right field. Should be a play. Nice routine fly ball out to right fielder. And first pitch, first out for Luke Filippi. Already starting strong here. And just like Gruny exclaimed, our catcher for today for the Port Jeff Royals, we now are at the top of the order. And McGowan is now looking at first pitch. And it was a strike call. It's early 0-1. We're seeing a lot. We're seeing a lot of good stuff from Luke Filippi. The second pitch is also going to be a strike. And he's just. Right now, he is mowing batters down. He is every pitch is, is in there for a strike. That pitch, he throws the curveball, and McGowan was able to foul that off. Now he's battling. Luke Filippi now going to take his time, taking a couple of deep breaths, kind of just resetting himself after that foul ball, get himself back into that groove. Next pitch is going to come in. It's going to be a high fastball. That's going to be brought out, lifted to the center field. A couple hats fly off for the Royals. But just like those two hats that fell off of their head, there are now two outs for the Royals in this game, in this inning. We have Stemmler now up. And we'll see how he attacks him. Now we saw last time he was up. He was able to lift the ball at the center field, and that was the ball that actually got over his head, the uh, Frankie D'Elia said, and put him to second base. And now he starts him off with a curveball. It's going to be a strike, and the second pitch is going to be high and inside for a ball. Luke Filippi delivers another inside pitch. It's going to be ball two. He takes another deep breath. Fires once again. A high fastball. Count's going to be three and one. And you see kind of, we're seeing a little bit of a kind of motion from Luke Filippi there. I'll, I'll kind of talk about it after this pitch right here. This pitch comes in. That's going to be a curveball in there for a strike. Full count. So we saw... How Luke Filippi, so the last pitch was high, and we saw Luke Filippi kind of wave his arm motion down to tell himself to kind of get that ball down. 
And it kind of goes to show how much of a perfectionist he is. Next pitch is going to come in. It's going to be fouled off. Oh, it's going to drop. Actually, drop in there. Sorry. That ball was a little, little blooper that got right in between that little triangle. And the first baseman, uh, the second baseman, and the right fielder. So that ball is able to drop in there. Now we have a man on first with two out for Bayport. So like I was saying, Lou Phillips is a perfectionist. He works hard on his craft. He wants to make sure that every pitch is his best pitch that he puts out there. And this last pitch was more of the same. Uh, that, that high pitch that we saw him kind of motion his arm down just to tell himself kind of get that pitch down. But now, Schaltner once again. And we'll see how he kind of pitches to him this time after giving up that home run in the first. He starts him off with a high fastball that like was in for ball one. This next pitch coming in now. It's going to be a curveball. It's going to be outside. So we're seeing that he's not trying to really give him anything too good to hit. He's trying to work these corners. He's trying to work upstairs. He's trying to kind of work around him. And that pitch is going to be in there. It was another, another kind of high fastball right in the top of the zone that Shelton was able to foul off right back at me. I kind of flinched there. <laughs> so next pitch is coming in. And that's going to be a fastball. That's going to be lifted out to center. And it's going to drop in there for a single. So Schaldner's having a good game so far. First, first hit he had was a home run, a two-run homer. And now this at bat, he's able to get a single, kind of battle off a tough pitch that Luke Filippi gave him. Now we have runners on first and second. So what th we thought was going to be another quick inning from Luke Filippi has now turned into a a decent situation. We have men on first and second. We have two outs. The batter right now is Olsen. And the first pitch is going to try another with these high curveballs. And try, he, he's trying to kind of drop these high curveballs into the zone, uh, but they're not kind of they're not dropping in there too bad. And the first pitch was going to be in there for a ball. Now Luke Phillippe gets right to gets ready to fire for the second pitch. It's going to be a high fastball, and once again he kind of tells himself to kind of get that pitch down. And watch watching Luke Phillippe play, it's 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 really an experience to see how he kind of races through his mind, his maturity throughout the years. Um, before, I hope he's going to look back the runner at second base. So before, it, we've seen a lot from Luke Filippi. We've seen, you know, he used to kind of get down on himself and, you know, in situations like these. But now we see how he kind of battles, how, he, how he's kind of getting through, through the adversity and kind of just putting himself in a position to get the next guy out. Which is very, very good maturity that we've seen from Luke Filippi throughout the years. Next pitch is going to be a strike in there. And now this is a battle between the pitcher and Ol between Luke Filippi and Olsen here. Battle of Luke's. Luke Olsen versus Luke Filippi. And that pitch is going to be... He's going to blow it right by him for the third strike, and that's going to end the inning. So another inning without any runs for Bay Point, or Bayport. And the score is still 2-1. It's looking like we have a good game here today. It's looking like we're going to have a pitching battle, and we're going to be able to see if the Port Jeff Royals are able to kind of push off a couple through. The top of the order now we have. So just like the last top of the order... Port Jeff really kind of relies on that top half of their order. They rely on getting those guys on so that, so that they can get the runs. That's where their runs are going to come from, kind of the top of the order. With your with your senior, kind of your best players, you have Natty Mullen, Luke Filippi, James Grunfeld, Tommy Yost. Um, you know, those are kind of your guys that, that you want out there to, to get you hits. And that's kind of what they rely on for this Port Jefferson Royal team. Schaldner's throwing also a pretty good game. Obviously, he'll let up that one run. But the breaks on these fastballs, they look to almost be almost... He kind of throws them like two seamers. So they are breaking in to the right-handed batters. 
uh, lefties, they're going away from them. So it's pretty interesting how, and, and we saw it last inning. We saw how we saw how our player, the Port Jefferson players, were getting jammed, at literally every single time. So most of the times they're getting jammed um, because how that pitch moves. We saw two grounders towards that second base side, and then we saw Frankie Delia. He did get jammed as well, but he was able to just kind of pull it and get to that third base side. Both ground, all three grounders. And they kind of get out of that inning quick. But now we'll see how the Royals respond. We'll see how they're able to get through. Sorry, I got a phone call there. We'll see how they're able to get through this and kind of try try and bring home another run to tie this baseball game. So we're going to see the first pitch from Natty Mullen. It's going to be an inside. Once again with that two-seamer, kind of it looks like a decent pitch they hit at the beginning, but then it kind of gets into you. Forces Natty Mullen to swing at that first pitch for a strike one. Strike two now. Oh, pitch number two, sorry, is a strike, a swinging strike. That one hit the outside corner. So Schaudner's looking like he's kind of commanding both both sides of the, of the plate. Next pitch coming in. It's going to be low in there for a ball. Count one and two. And it's very important for Natty to get on base. Uh, if, if you're the Port Jeff Royals, you want Natty to get on base because uh, you have Luke Filippi, who who could honestly drive him home the next the next batter. That pitch is going to be a curveball. He tried like Filippi. He tries to kind of drop it in there, but that pitch seems to not get not be getting called because it is a little bit high. Natty Mullen grounds the ball to shortstop, and he's able to. They're able to make the play for an out. Just a little grounder, routine grounder, grounder over there to shortstop. And they're able to make that play. So now we're going to have Luke Filippi back up. That battle of the pitchers that I've been referencing before. Oh, and he's going to hit him on the first pitch. They got away from him there and allows Luke Filippi to get on first. With James Grunfelder up now. So just like with Schaldner, Flippy's able to get on base two times against the rival pitcher. And we'll, and just like the first inning, Flippy gets on base with Grooney up at bat. And we'll see how this goes. Flippy's going to steal on the first pitch. And that was a good pitch to steal on. It was an off-speed pitch. And he's able to get in there at second base. To get that steal. Now they have a runner in scoring position. And the Royals are really trying to get across the second run of the game and tie this baseball game. Next pitch. It's going to be a foul ball right back at me again. And Grooney's really trying to look to, really trying to have a good season. You see, you see Grooney, now he's kind of motioning his bat, trying to, he, he almost he almost had that pitch. He knew he was a little bit over it. Next pitch is going to be outside. And now Grooney's working the count here. Grooney getting on base is huge. If we're able to see him get on base. The Royals really are in need of a single here. Oh, Grooney fouls that pitch off to the backstop once again. And Grooney's really hunting for his pitch. He's, he's being patient at the box. Not letting the game get too ahead of him here. He's allowing himself to breathe. He's allowing himself to digest the situation. And really see every pitch for what it is. Instead of just trying to get that big hit. Trying to get that RBI. He's just kind of working the count as he should. So the next pitch is going to come in here. Next pitch is going to be... Fastball in the zone. Grooney swings right over it. Strike out for out two here. Now we're going to see what Tommy Yost is able to do. Tommy Yost was a victim to the strikeout last time. So now we'll see what he can do on this at bat here. He's going to ground that one over to second base. 
Second baseman's able to make the play for out number three. So the Royals do end up stranding Luke Flippy at second base. Unable to get across any runs. And what they're doing right now is what you're seeing is, is pretty is pretty good for the Royals. You're seeing them get base runners, trying to work counts, uh, trying to get players in scoring position to be able to get them in. But they're just not able to kind of get that player across over home plate to get that tying run. So we'll see how Luke Filippi now battles and gets through. And, and see, it. He's, he's, once again, he's going to be trying to command the zone. He's going to be throwing a lot of strikes. He's going to be getting his team in position. And, the f and now we're reaching the top of the fourth inning here. It's a close game, still 2-1. to one. And the only blemish that, that Luke Filippi's had, and I'm going to keep on referencing is the only blemish is that was was that home run to Sheldner, the, the opposing pitcher. And, you know, uh, on the opposite side, the only, the only kind of blemish we've seen from Bayport's pitching was hitting, hitting Luke Filippi. <laughs> The, the rival pitcher, so we've we've kind of seen that pitcher kind of duel in this one, and, and it's really great to see. You know, some baseball games like these are usually, you know, bore people from watching the game, but to avid baseball watchers, these are the baseball games you want to see. You want to see the close games with great pitching on both sides, good defense. So walking up to the plate now for... Walking up to the plate... For Bayport, it's going to be number 13, Robertson. And we'll see how this inning unfolds the, the top of the fourth. Luke Filippi throws the first pitch, and it's going to be in there for a strike, really blowing it by some of these Bayport players. Again, these pitches right by these players. Kind of overpowering with that fastball. Second pitch. Oh, that second pitch is going to hit the umpire. It's a little bit upstairs. And we're just going to take a break. Make sure that the umpire is all right after he kind of got hit in the face mask there. Allow him to give him some time, recuperate himself, reset. It's always scary when that happens. You want to make sure that everyone's doing okay. The ball kind of came off of the top of Grooney's glove and ricocheted into the umpire. The next pitch, it's going to be strike number three. So, Grooney, after, after we got through that situation, we're able to see now. I was just out one, working quick as always. Next batter we're going to have is Clark. He's going to square up for the bunt for that first pitch. But Filippi threw a curveball that kind of went outside. So Clark just kind of pulled back the bat. Next pitch, it's going to be fouled off. One on one count now to Clark. Luke Filippi now back on the mound, working quick. Fastball that he gets hit into right, left field, sorry. And Abby Rolf is able to make the play out in left for the second out. So yeah, Abby Rolf, really solid defensive player. Really able to, really learning how to track the baseballs. You know, one, one of the most important things that she wanted to get developed this year and, and kind of get better at was tracking fly balls because fly balls in the outfield aren't always the easiest to track. So she was able to do that on that pitch. And May, as soon as he gets on the bat, Luke Filippi threw a first pitch fastball to him. And May was able to take that pitch opposite field. And he kind of grounded it through the infield, got right past Rory at second base, and got into first base with a single. Next batter, we have Most, number 23. First pitch to throw him is a high fastball. 
right on top of that zone. These these misses are very close for Luke Filippi in this game. Next pitch is going to come in. It's going to be right. Once again, he, he's trying to hit that same spot, that really elevated fastball. And he's trying to make it as effective as possible, but the strikes are not being called, so now he's down in the count, 2-0. and oh. Next pitch. Went to that fastball. Lowered, lowered the elevation on that pitch just a little bit and got it in for a strike to make the count now 2-1. and one. Luke Filippi from the stretch. Pitches again. The ball's going to get by Grooney. Make it back to the backstop. And May is able, with that pass ball, to get over to second base, put himself in scoring position for Bayport. So now Bayport is in the position of scratching on another run here. See if they, they're able to do it with the bottom of their lineup. Most sees the next pitch. Their fastball blows it by him once again. In for strike number two, and now the count is full. So now we'll see how this battle goes. Luke Filippi pitches again. It's going to be another fastball. Blows it by him for strike number three, and that's the end of the top of the fourth. No run score. Bayport leaves a runner at second base, unable to get him home. And a missed opportunity to kind of extend that lead. But now... The score stays at 2-1, and, and poor Jeff is back on offense. Schaltner still is going to be out there for Bayport, as expected. He's throwing a good game, other than that, that one little blemish. So now it's the bottom of the fourth. And for Port Jefferson, this is where you really want to see you really want to see them try, you know, kind of what they've been doing all game. But we've seen it mostly with the top of the order. Um, we've seen Luke Phillippe get on base. Uh, we saw Owens also get on base. He was able to score in that run that was really big for poor Jeff. Uh, that The freshman able to get his first RBI, and it was a big one. It was a big one to bring the, bring the lead, to cut the lead down in half. And talking about Owens, he's going to be the first batter in this inning. And we'll see how he's able to start off. Let's see if he's able to continue on to his one and one day. Uh, if he could possibly make it a two and two day, that would vastly help out the Royals. So now Owens is going to walk up to the plate. Shotner ready to pitch, staring him down. Owens, first pitch kind of inside. He's able to battle off. He fouled off the first pitch. See how we'll see how Dan Owens is able to do it. Next pitch, he's gonna kind of get it up in the air. And that ball is gonna be foul. So what you wanna see here. is how he can battle through this at bat. Next pitch, you can see it's gonna ground over to third base. Third baseman's able to make the play. Owens out at first for the first out of the inning. So now with one out, Abby Rolf is gonna step into the box for her second at bat of the day. First pitch is going to be in there for strike one. Fastball. If you really want to see her get aggressive here, she's getting pitched to hit. You really want to see her get aggressive in this in this game. Swing the bat. Second pitch is going to be a little bit higher. Fastball. That's going to be in there for another strike. Next pitch. It's going to be a little bit low. Bayport thought they might have gotten the strike three on that one, but the umpire sees it a little bit low. Count one and two. 
Next pitch in there. Abby Roll swings. She gets contact. Able to, the shortstop's able to make the play over at first. For out two. So now the Port Jeff Royals. Now in two out position. Nobody on. Massimo's going to step up to the box. Get ready for his second up out of the day. First pitch. It's going to be kind of right in there. So we're seeing a lot of straight fastballs out of Schaltner. We're seeing a lot of good command of the zone. Massimo's going to swing. He gets a little bit jammed there. And he's gonna be able, he's gonna ground out over to end the inning for Port Jeff. So Port Jeff does not have anybody on base for that inning. They don't leave anybody on. They go down in order one, two, three. And that sets up now the top of the fifth inning. Back on the mound is Luke Filippi, as expected. Thank you, appreciate it. So we'll see now how Bayport continues on this offense, see if they can try and pour in some more runs. Kind of extend that lead for them. See if they can scratch in a couple runs. Luke Filippi trying to prevent that to happen. Trying to keep that score as close as possible here. Keep that score at a 2-1. and one. That's important because 4... Before the Royals, next inning, they have 8-9 in the top. So we're going to see Rory, Frankie D'Elia. Then we're back at the top of the order. And like I've said before, you really want to see that top of the order for the Royals. First pitch. Costa tries to lay down a bunt. Almost got dangerous for him. Almost ran into the pitch. But since he did go through, that was going to be strike one. Next pitch. Another fastball in there for strike number two. And almost immediately, Costa is down 0-2 in the count. Luke Phillippe gets ready to fire for the third pitch, and it's going to miss outside. 1-2. and two. I mean, that, That's a good two-strike pitch right outside, trying to get the batter fishing there. That pitch is going to be popped up. Foul. And everyone gets out of the way. Everyone is safe and able to get out of there safely. All the, all the fans yelling, get out of the way. Everyone's safe, we're all good. Next pitch, that pitch is gonna be lined down the line and it is a foul ball. Almost got down the line. Owens was able to get a double out of that play. But instead, it was just a long foul ball and now we're back to a two strike count. And a lot of these hits are going opposite field for these righties for Bayport. It's really showing you that Filippi's throwing pretty quick here. He's, trying, he's getting these batters to swing a little bit later than they're used to. And then another one, a grounder opposite field to Rory at second base. He's able to make the routine out at first. And just like that, we have one out. And now we have McGowan back, back up at the plate here as Bayport returns to the top of their order here in the top of the fifth inning. He tries to lay down the bunt. That ball... That ball stays fair, almost. Almost rolled out of play. Gruny tried to allow it to roll out of play, but that ball stays in play. And McGowan is now on first base. So we're seeing this kind of strategy from Bayport. Trying to bunt, get get a couple base runners in. So this has kind of been their strategy against maybe a faster pitcher, someone that they're a little bit behind on. They want to get bunt, they want to get base runners. And that's the way they did it, and it worked on that instance. Next 
Next bat, he, he did a kind of check swing, kind of fisted out. He's going to ground to the second baseman, Rory. Uh, there, Since the ball was kind of hit kind of very softly, he, he didn't really want to swing at that pitch. He kind of half swung and made contact on accident. There's a slow dribbler right to him, and he's able to make the routine out of first. So we have two outs, men on second base, just like the last inning, the top of the fourth inning where they had somebody on second. We're going to see if maybe this time now with Schaltner up at the plate, if they can maybe bring home a third run here. Or will Luke Filippi get one on the board for the pitcher in this kind of pitcher's duel? All right, we've seen we've seen Schaltner get on base twice. We've seen Filippi get on base twice. So now we're going to be able to see if Luke Filippi can get one on from board for the pitchers. And Luke Filippi makes a move. Gets the second, gets the guy on second base to kind of move back. Just kind of looks him back, make sure he's not getting too far of a lead out there. Next pitch into Schaltner. He's going to be in there for a strike, fastball. Hit the bottom outside corner. It's an effective pitch. And very efficient pitching from both pitches in this game so far, really. Not trying to trick the betters too much. They're kind of just giving you their heaters and letting you hit them. Filippi now throws out a high, high fastball, a little bit way up the stairs. And then he motions himself to get that pitch down once again that we've seen countless times in this game. And it's big here. It's big here for Filippi to get this out. Schaldner's going to hit that ball to center. It's going to keep on going back, 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 and it is gone again. His second home run for Schaldner. And a two home run game and a two, two home run, two run home run once again for Schaldner to extend the lead to four to one for Bayport Blue Point. And once again, it was on that fastball. He's just getting beat by the fastball. First, first time, first home run was to out there in right field. This time he takes it dead center right over the 305 sign. And extends the lead for Bayport Blue Point. Next pitch, which is going to be to Olsen. The first pitch to Olsen was a strike. Once again, trying to get that fastball in there, working that fastball. And it almost begs the question you, you, you kind of want to toss in maybe that off speed a couple more times to Schaltner or, or somebody that you know has been having you. Having you you know, having your number in this game. Schaltner's been having your number this entire game. Two hits, now three hits against him. I mean, he's going to, Luke Filippi's going to take down Owens. Or Olsen, sorry. One, two, three. He's going to strike him out. So that gets them out of the inning, but not before. Another home run from number seven on Bayport. Now the score... Is four to one. We'll see how, like I said, with the top of the order almost coming up for the Royals, we'll see if they're able to continue, put on pressure, and try to get back into this game. You want to see them get, scratch a couple more runs in there. You want to see them get get a little bit closer. We are in the bottom of the fifth, so they are running out of time uh, game-wise. But you, if you want to see them cut into the lead in this inning right here, you want to see them maybe scratch in one, maybe two. Cut the, cut the lead in half. And then as we move on to the sixth, the bottom of the seventh, that's when you can possibly take the lead, but it's also going to take good pitch and good defense for the Royals to get that done. So we'll see how they're able to do it. The next batter we're going to see for the Royals is going to be number two. Your second baseman's been getting a lot of action out there today. A lot of ground balls being sent over his way. And Rory's been making... Make, making all these plays. We've been seeing Rory very effective out there in the field. So we'll be able to see now if he can get himself on here offensively.
Murray up at the plate now for the first pitch from Schaltner. He's going to lay down the bunt. That bunt's going to go straight back to Schaltner. Schaltner's going to be able to make the play. And they, they tried to take a page out of Blueport, uh, Bayport, sorry. Tried to take a page out of their book. Tried to get a runner. Tried to take a page out of their book and square down a bunt. Sorry, there was a foul ball from the opposite field. That was brought into here. I had to look up to see if I was had to move. But now, that bunt was unsuccessful. The placement was right back to the pitcher, which is not you know precisely where you want that pitch to be, or that placement to be. But now we have Frankie D'Elia up, your nine hitter for today. The first pitch is gonna see, he's gonna foul it off. And they <laughs> and sends it over to the other field here at Diamond in the Pines. So now that ball is going to be brought back over here. And Frankie Delia is going to set back up in the box. Shelton is going to get ready to throw the next pitch. And that pitch is going to be hit that bottom corner in for a strike. Next pitch from Shelton now. He's going to send a pitch now the inside corner. So he's working both sides of the plate. Seems to have success so far in that. Again, the strike calls that he needs. And Frankie D'Elia is down 0-2 in this count. Schaltner is just going to take his hat off. I think they had a situation with another foul ball out there they're going to take care of. Schaltner is going to take a deep breath, get back onto the mound. Frankie D'Elia getting back in the box, and we're ready to roll once again. That next pitch is going to come in. And it's going to be a strike right in there. Frankie might have thought it was a little bit up, but with that two-strike count, you really want to be defensive there. And now the Royals have two outs in the bottom of the fifth. With that being the nine hitter, now we have Natty Mullen, your one hitter. The first pitch is going to take. He's going to send that over to third base. He's going to send that over... Sorry, he's going to send that ball over to the third baseman. The third baseman had trouble with the ball initially. So he bobbled the ball in his glove. Then when he tried to make the throw, he almost short hopped the first baseman. The first baseman was not able to make the play. That ball got behind him to the fence. We saw Nettie Mullen almost try and go for a second there. Uh, but he did slip and he got back into first safely. So now with two outs here, Luke Filippi is up with one man on. We'll see what he's able to do. First pitch, he's going to see. It's going to be low. That ball gets by the catcher. Natty Mullen's going to get in there safely at second base. So now for Luke Filippi, he finally gets a chance with a runner in scoring position to really add on to the score here. Two previous at-bats he had. He had no one on. Now he has someone in scoring position. Let's see if he can bring a run in right here. Luke Filippi is going to see the pitch. It's going to be a nice curve that Luke Filippi brought in there. Luke Filippi lined that one to third base. The third baseman, after making a defensive error, makes the defensive play on that one to end the bottom of the fifth inning. So the Royals do strand a runner on second base, unable to bring home another runner, which is a common theme throughout this game. We've seen a couple times, this might have been the third time here, that we've seen a runner on second base, the poor Jeff, just unable to convert kind of get that guy across and with Luke Filippi on the play it was kind of the situation that you really wanted if you're a fan of the Port Jeff Royals uh, you, you really wanted to see him right there get through and it looks like with that inning that's going to be it for Luke Filippi he is stepping off he's not pitching anymore we're going to see a new pitcher in for the game for the Royals this pitch is going to be Natty Mullen the freshman is very promising so if you're a fan of the Port Jeff Royals, you're really looking forward to seeing this kid in more games. He is currently leading, he's leading off for the Royals right now, number 66, Natty Mullen. He's a leadoff hitter that we just showed before. And now he's being able to chance to lead the team pitching-wise as well. So as Luke Filippi kind of finishes his pitching day, it's an opportunity to see what kind of he did today. And when, you, when you're looking back at Luke Filippi's pitching performance, overall, I mean, yes, he allowed four runs, 
But overall, it was a good pitching performance. He, he demanded the zone, throwing a lot of strikes, uh, really threw in that fastball and a lot there, trying to blow it by batters, and he was able to do that in almost all the batters. Uh, he just had trouble with one batter, and that batter was Schaldner, uh, the opposing pitcher. And going into this game, we knew that Schaldner was a good player. We knew that he was going to be kind of their toughest guy to get out. And he's hitting. He's their cleanup hitter, so he's going to be a good hitter. But just throughout the game, every time Schaldner got up, you, you know, he Schaldner had Luke Phillippe's number, and, and it was plainly it was plainly obvious. Uh, in the first inning, we saw a two-run home run uh, out of Schaldner. Then in the and then the next time he got up in his second at bat, he got a single. Now, the third at bat, he also hit a home run. Uh, so it begs the question, like how it, 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 it's an approach thing that maybe Luke Philby needs to work on, maybe implementing more curves in there, trying to, trying to get players out different ways than just trying to get players out via the fastball. So overall, it was a good performance, but now moving on to Natty Mullins' pitching day. His first pitch of the day is going to be high and inside for a ball one. Now he is throwing to Robertson, who's at the plate, their fifth hitter. I'm sorry, Schaldner is their third hitter. Sorry, Olsen's their four. I'm sorry about that. So now we get their five hitter Robertson, but even at the third hitter, Schaltner obviously that's a very powerful spot to be in for the Royals. So now Schaltner, we'll see how he continues his day, but for now, Natty Mullen's gonna throw a pitch in there. It's gonna be fouled back in there for a strike for the count one and two. Next pitch from Natty Mullen's gonna come in now. He's going to get that strike called three. So now the Mullen's first, first batter in a varsity baseball game is going to be a strikeout. Very encouraging for that kid. And it's going to be great to see him moving forward. Next batter is going to be Clark for Bayport. Number 16. And he's going to square in that for that bunt. That bunt's going to go straight back to the pitcher. Natty Mullen's going to be able to make that kind of routine Pitching, fielding play. With that being said, two quick outs for Natty Mullen. Now, if he's able to get this next guy out, Mr. May, who got a single in his last appearance. The first pitch is going to be fouled. That one's going to be deep out of play. For the first pitch, first strike. Natty's next pitch. He switched up his delivery a little bit. He tries to kind of trick the batters uh, with timing-wise. He kind of tries to mess them up timing-wise with, with his leg there. He, he changes the speed of his leg kick. Sometimes he'll slow it down. Sometimes he'll speed it up. He'll do like a double pump with his leg. Just try to mess up the batter's timing. It's a very good idea that he wants to kind of implement just to kind of trick the batters. Next pitch by Natty Mullen is going to be in there for a strike. And Natty Mullen, so far in his performance today, I guess it's only been three batters, but he's been looking pretty sharp here. And it's very encouraging because obviously he's a freshman. So moving forward. Ooh, he throws a curveball in there, almost gets him to go. But the ball is going to be low in there for a ball. We get a full count on May. That full count pitch is going to be a fastball and just misses right outside. And May works himself a walk after that long at bat, that battle at the plate. And now walking up. Walking up, it's going to be a change. So Bayport's going to change most their eight hole hitter. And now we're going to see number 15 for Bayport. Stepping into the box. So, so far in this game, just kind of, kind of like recapping everything. You're seeing a lot, a lot of good pitching. And like I said before, that's what you're going to see a lot from the Royals. And the offense is kind of going to lag behind just a little bit. And that's been very evident in this game so far. We've seen... A couple opportunities for the Royals as that first pitch 
to number 15 of Bayport's going to be in there for a strike. We've seen moments of, you know, good signs for the Royals. But they just weren't able to get those runs across. And that second pitch is also going to be in there for a strike. You're seeing Natty Mullen kind of attack that outside corner. Uh, really trying to make sure he gives the batters nothing really great to the hit. While also trying to get it over with that fast ball. The next pitch coming in. Another outside pitch, but that one's going to be a little bit too far outside. And for a ball. Eddie Mullen from the stretch, fires once again and tacks that outside corner once again for the strike three and the emphatic strike three call from the home plate umpire to end the inning. <laughs> so Shelton is going to step back onto the mound Having a good game so far, only let up one run to this point. Now we're in the bottom of the sixth. He's looking kind of just to continue his strong day. His approach today has been really getting batters out with that fastball. He's been overpowering the Port Jefferson hitters and making them get behind and count super quick, not giving them a lot of time to kind of react and step into the box, and, and he's really getting it done. So for the Royals, we're going to see batters 3, 4, 5 in the order of our next three batters. We're going to see James Grunfelder, Tommy Yost, and Den Owens. And this is where most of the offense is coming in this game. Um, is this top of the order, this top five hitters. It's really what you're looking out for for the Royals. Grunfelder trying to get on base here, trying to start off this game well. Has been getting some contact on baseballs, but hasn't really found a good pitch to kind of hit, kind of get on base. Gruny, he's going to take that first pitch. He's going to see it. It's going to be a fly ball out to center field, a routine fly ball to the center fielder. And another time where Gruny sees a pitch that he might want to get, he's just unable for that pitch to kind of land in a spot where he can get on base. So that's going to be a quick one out for the Royals. Next batter is going to be Tommy Yost, your four hitter. And let's see how he can do it. First pitch he's going to see is outside. We've seen Tommy Yost get a couple ground balls. Making plays defensively. Next pitch to Tommy Yost. It's going to be another ground ball. It's going to get past the pitcher. Right back to the second baseman. Second baseman's able to make the play. Routine ground ball. And the Royals now have two outs, nobody on, and Daniel Owens is up at the plate. So Daniel Owens in this game, looking at him, he's been having a pretty solid game here. Uh, he is the only source of offense for the Royals that we've seen. And his first at bat, he was able to take a pitch and hit it over the shortstop, which was able to bring in another run. The first pitch he's going to see is going to be a slow dribbler to third baseman. Third baseman is able to make that play and a routine out. So the Royals are going to go down in order in one, two, three. They were unable to get anybody on base, and the Royals are going to be back on defense. So Natty Mullen's going to get step back onto the mound. So looking forward, their next game, the Port Jeff Royals, they're going to be playing John Glenn. It's going to be at home, and the broadcast will have a visual aspect to it as well, so we'll be able to actually see the game. Uh, as well as listen to it, which will be a cool dynamic, something that the Port Jefferson Royals really wanted to do this year, and, and I, I really wanted to help them out. 
and being able to do this is, is truly, really a great honor to do. Um, to, and I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be great game on Wednesday against John Glenn. And we'll see how they do. So for Bayport here, the batters that Natty Mullen's going to see this half inning is going to be Costa at 9, and then they're going to see the top of the order. And it's looking like they're keeping in their top guys in the order. They're not going to make any switches over there, so we're probably going to see McGowan and Stemmler after Costa here. So Costa steps in the box. Natty Mullen's able to throw, and he squares up for the plate. He squares up for the bunt. That pitch went high and inside, almost ended up hitting him. But fortunately, Costa was able to get out of the way. He also pulled his bat back, making that ball one. Second pitch of the at-bat is going to be a low fastball. It's going to be in there for a strike. Natty Mullen gets ready to fire once again. And another fastball. That one's going to be grounded over the shortstop, Luke Filippi. Great defensively over there. And he's going to miss the throw, under, kind of underthrow it a little bit. And Tamios is unable to make that pick play at first. And Costa's going to end up safe on first after that miss, miss throw. So now we're going to see McGowan back up at the plate. Their leadoff hitter, number three for Bayport. When moments like that happen for a pitcher, you kind of just have to shake it off, kind of move going. We're going to see how Natty Mullen kind of bounces back after that error. McGowan squares up for the bunt. That ball is going to get past Grooney, the catcher. Kind of hit the backstop here, and Costa's able to move over to second base. So now you're really going to want to see, after that wild pitch, you're really going to want to see Natty Mullen kind of reset himself, kind of focus up, and just throw a lot of strikes. That pitch is going to be, he's going to square up for a bunt. Once again, that ball is going to be fouled up into the backstop for a strike. And Bayport's going to call timeout just so he can talk to his hitter. And Grooney takes the advantage with that timeout being called to talk to his pitcher, making sure that everything is all right with him, kind of giving him some time to reset himself, take a deep breath, and make sure that he can move on, kind of be effective here for the rest of this inning. So now everyone's back from their timeout. What was the name of the pitcher prior, number 12, for Port Jeff? Luke Filippi was the starter pitcher. Filippi? Yes, sir. Okay. Natty Mullen throws the pitch again. Squares up for another bunt, does McGowan. And he's going to pull it back. That pitch was a little bit high and outside. So we're still looking for Natty to kind of settle back, get, get, re-get his control of that fastball. Let's see if he can do it on this pitch. He delivers. And that pitch is gonna be high, just misses upstairs. And that pitch, a lot of, all the pitchers in today's game have really been trying to attack that kind of corner at the top. But they're just not getting the calls that they need. So we'll see if he's able to adjust, kind of lower that pitch just a little bit to get that strike call. Danny Mullen delivers once again. That pitch comes in. And that one's going to be in there for a strike. So this is where you want to see. This is kind of the first building block, that first kind of stepping stone to get him back into control of this game. Matty fires another pitch. That one's going to be hit up the middle. Luke Phillippe's unable to get it. Costa's rounding third base. He's going to score. That's going to be another run for Bayport to make the game a 5-1 game in favor of Bayport. McGowan's going to step over there at first as he got his single. Didn't move anywhere else. And now Jesse Rosen, after that, the coach for the Royals, 
just wants to give a talk to his pitcher. So just like what Grooney tried to do, he's just going to try and reset his guy up there, just trying to make sure that he's doing all right. In a situation like this, it's hard. You know, Obviously, you start that inning off with an error. That guy shouldn't even be on base. So it kind of gets into a young pitcher's mind like Maddie's, and it, it affected him a little bit. Uh, I, I know what Rosen's telling his pitcher right now. He's kind of just stressing the fact to kind of throw strikes to make sure that you're getting ahead of accounts, not giving the batters any sort of advantage at the plate and set, setting up his pitcher up for the best possible outcome. So Grooney's going to talk to his pitcher a couple more words. He's going to run back here and set up. And now we're going to see Stemmler for Bayport up at the plate. Stemmler gets ready for the first pitch. He's going to square up for a bunt once again. And Natty's going to step off of the mound. Pretty smart move. Didn't like what he saw. Was a little bit too uncomfortable, and he just steps off the mound. Smart move. The bunt's going to be squared again. And at this point, you have to also... And that ball's going to be low in there for a ball. At this point, you're going to have to almost assume, or at least think about, why these players are squaring off a bunt. Obviously, they'll make contact, and they'll get on base. Is the idea. But they're also noticing that throwing a lot of balls when they square up for these bunts. And once again, he's going to square for this bunt. And he's going to try and bunt the ball. And this kind of strategy this is something that I really haven't seen much of before. It's kind of bunting. Almost every player is bunting. And they're probably noticing that the defense isn't really reacting too much to it. And Rosen trying to get his team in the best defense for this bunt that he's assuming might be on its way again. So the next pitch is going to be fired in there. Another bunt's going to be squared in. And that ball's going to be bunted down the third baseline. It's going to dribble foul. So once again, another squared bunt. Now we have a two-strike count, so we're not going to see him square up for another bunt. At least that's the thought process. It's a pretty interesting, pretty interesting strategy, not something that, I, that I'm used to seeing. The runner in scoring position, usually with your second batter of the order, you try to kind of get that guy from second in. But working more of a small ball approach here. Not something we're used to in today's era. The next pitch, it's going to be a curve. It's going to be in there for a swing strike. It's going to be a strikeout. Stemmler does end up striking out with that pitch. And McGowan moves over to third base with a steal on that pitch as well. And once again, perfect time to pitch, perfect time to steal on that off-speed pitch. Gives yourself a little bit more time to get over to the third base. And now with that being said, your third hitter for Bayport is back up at the plate. We'll see what Schaltner is able to do in this game. Already has two home runs in this game. So we'll be able to see if he's able to notch in another one possibly. Natty Mullen starts him off with an off-speed pitch. Came low in for ball one. Natty once again fires. And it's going to be another fastball down the middle. And that one's looking like it's gone again. That is the third home run today for Schaltner. Once again in that right center field. And Schaltner with three home runs. Three two-run home runs as well to put Bayport up 7-1 in this baseball game in the top of the seventh. And this game right here is a big one for, for Schaltner. Number seven, three home runs, and they've all been on that same pitch. He's seeing that pitch perfectly. It is kind of that middle-out fastball that he's seeing. It's kind of just, for him, it's kind of just like a laying duck. It's, he's just seeing it. He's powering it over the fence, and now that's the third time. So now we'll see how Netty Mullen shakes that one off. And what was a close game a couple innings ago is now bolstered up to a 7-1 game. All due, really, to Schaltner's two two-run home runs in that span. Obviously, we did see that one little run come in also earlier on in this inning. But now, 7-1, it's really looking grim 
for the Port Jefferson Royals to get back into this game. Natty Mullen's going to start off number five with a an high and inside fastball for strike one, kind of bouncing back from that home run. The second pitch of the at-bat. It's going to be another fastball in that same spot. Seemed to have success, some success on that spot there. Let's see if he goes to it more. Last inning, he was really focused on that outside kind of pitch. This time, he's kind of attacking the inside of the zone. Next pitch, drops it low. It's going to be a ball. Counts one and two. Next pitch, Natty Mullen fires. It's another fastball. Almost gets there. That that, that same kind of elevated fastball that they're trying to get in there at the top of that zone, unable to get it there. It's a very close pitch, though. Counts two and two. Next pitch. Ooh, inside. And it's going to hit the batter, and he's going to take his base. Next batter is going to be number eight for Bayport. Which is also a change. So the last two batters have been different. So usually in number 13 Robertson spot, we're going to see a new batter, number five in for Bayport. Nettie Mullen's going to take the first pitch. He's going to throw it a little bit too low in for ball one to start the at bat. Nelly Mullen's going to set up for the second pitch. Takes a deep breath and fires. That one's going to be fouled off, kind of tagging that low low portion of the zone there, these first two pitches. Number eight kind of battled that one off and was able to foul it off. Count's tied up one and one. And if you're Natty Mullen here, this might not be, you know, your, the, the perfect first start as a varsity player, or first uh, kind of appearance as a varsity player pitching. And the next pitch... Low again for ball two. But it's also something to work from. You know, you saw kind of what worked for you. Because he's had he's had a, he's had a success here as well. So you've seen a couple things to work on. Some, a couple things to keep doing that's been working. Uh, we've seen that outside kind of pitch getting a lot of pitchers out, uh, players out. We've seen this inside fastball that he throws in there again for a strike. We've seen success with that pitch. So moving forward. You take these kind of snapshots of the game and you and you kind of build from them to get a better second appearance and third appearance and so on and so forth. Next pitch from Natty Mullen is going to be in there. It's going to be down the middle. Play right back to the batter, or to the pitcher, sorry. It kind of caromed off of his glove, Natty Mullen's glove, but he's still able to make that play at first, unable to get the guy from first base originally. So number five ends up moves over to second base. And number eight was out at first. So now we have a new batter once again. Number 16. Number 16 up at the plate. Clark is back up now. And now if you're Bayport, you're in a position where you could get some more runs here. You can get Italian some more runs, really get... You know, put your foot on the gas here. And keep telling them in. Keep pouring in the runs. Uh, Natty Mullen's going to do that next pitch. It's going to be an inside fastball. Oof. And unfortunately, uh, Luke Flippy once again unable to make the throw over to first. He made a sliding play, a spectacular sliding play to kind of get to the ball. But once he got up, tried to make that throw, he was unable to, kind of short-armed it again. And... Tommy Yost at first base was unable to make that play over at first base. So that runner from second base actually moved over to third, and he came in to score after that throwing error. So now we have the score of 8-1 in favor of Bayport in the top of the seventh, and they have just, in this inning, they have really just kind of closed the door. They've, they have hammered in that final nail in the coffin, and it really seems... 
it really seems like they've kind of took control of this game. All the momentum is on their side. And, and everything looks and point is pointing towards a Bayport win. Obviously, we'll see what happens in the bottom half of the inning. Natty Mullen throwing now to May. And May, number four, takes a ball inside, a bit too inside, in fact, that it hits him. And he heads over to first base. Now number nine, in for Bayport. And number nine is going to be a new batter. Usually in this position we see number 23 most. But now we're going to see number nine for Bayport. And Natty Mullen, you know, you're really seeing, so we saw kind of a tale of two stories here with the Port Jeff pitchers. We saw Luke Filippi on one hand. We saw him kind of dominating the zone, throwing a lot of strikes, really attacking the zone, getting players out quickly. Uh, now we're seeing with Nadi Mullen, and, and this could this could be an age thing. This could just be stylistically, but we're seeing more we're, we're seeing more kind of outside pitches, more we're kind of working around the zone. Um, obviously, he's not getting the calls that he would like to, um, and he's really trying he's really trying to get some control. But control has been a problem in the first game we saw with Tommy Yost and, and, and the pitches that ensued in that game. Now we're seeing control issues from um, Natty Mullen. It could also be the cold weather. Uh, it could be a thing, also a factor. But as a pitcher, you gotta you got to learn to get through that. And, and we'll see kind of how that gets done here. Natty Mullen's going to start off number nine with a low ball. Let's bring the count to 1-0. The next pitch he fires now from the stretch is going to be in there for a strike, and this is kind of, that spot is kind of low that that low low inside corner that he kind of got in that pitch. He kind of want to see him work that a little bit more in there. Uh, next pitch he's going to shake off the catcher. He knows what he wants to throw here. A couple seconds in, and we have 23 up. That's interesting. We have number 23 up now. We have most up at the plate. And most is going to ground one over to first. He's going to ground one over to first base. Tommy Yost bobbles the ball. Unable to make the play at first base. And another error. Another, another defensive problem for the Port Jefferson Royals. So not only has it just been about the pitching, throwing balls. Not only has it just been about uh, the great game we've seen from Schultmer, but also we also have to understand that some of these plays should be made, right? So that that's one of them. We saw another one where the where the ball was bobbled and the play wasn't made, and we saw one in the outfield that probably should have been caught. So just little plays. They might just be one play here and one play there. But errors in baseball game are really what kill you. They allow more runners on. That you're making your pitcher at that point throw more pitches than he would usually have to in that inning. And it also gets to the pitchers mentally. Uh, pitching is a humongous mental game. And you really want to see how... How a young pitcher like this kind of gets through this adversity. Uh, the, first, the, first inning he, the first inning he was in, he was able to kind of get through that inning pretty well pretty quickly but now we're seeing some adversity and we're seeing some control loss uh, number nine up at the plate is going to ground it to kind of the middle gets by the pitcher he's going to get th almost through the hole he was able to get caught by Luke Filippi and throw over to first base and he's actually safe at first uh, number nine showing off the wheels there was able to make it first fair uh, sorry Make it safe at first. Now we have runners on second and first. And with that, another run does end up scoring to make the score now 10 to 1 in favor of Bayport. McGowan, the leadoff batter, is now back up at plate. Next pitch comes in. It's going to be an outside strike. Kind of hits that outside black and gets the call for it.
Next pitch. It's going to be a called ball. Count's going to be tied now, one and one. Natty gets ready to fire once again. In for a strike. Now, interesting story about Natty. He wears number 66. And when we have the visual, we'll be able to see that. He wears number 66 for the Royals. And I, I asked him about it. You know, What made you kind of choose 66? Because uh, Port Jeff is wearing New Jersey this year. As that ball gets lifted into center field. Four and out. And Jaden does make the play out in center field. There's a defensive change. So now Jaden's out in center field. To end the half inning for the Royals. So, so going back to that story, I asked Natty, why, why, why'd you wear number 66? Why'd you choose that specific number? And, he, and he's telling me, he's like, you know what, Gabe? You know, when I was looking at it, and, you know, I, was, I was thinking of a number. I like 66. That was the year my dad was born. My dad was born in, he said his dad was born in 1966, and that, that was pretty pretty cool and, you know, pretty special to me because a lot of people choose their numbers based off, you know, their favorite number or, you know, one of their your players' favorite numbers or one of their players' you know numbers that they wear. But this story here, when you have a player choose his number because that's his dad's birthday, that was pretty special. And it was something that was really cool that I thought, I thought was very cool. Um, so now for the Royals, in the bottom of the seventh, we're going to see who we're going to have up at plate. Starting off, we're going to have Abby Rolf. And it should go into Massimo. And then the third batter we'll see is Rory. So we'll see how Abby Rolf gets to continue on to her day. See if the, the Royals got some fight back into them. And Schaltmer's going to start off the pitch. He's still pitching. He's looking to get a complete game here now. He's going to start off that at bat with a strike. Second pitch coming in. Abby Rolf is going to ground that one. It's going to go to the third baseman. Third baseman is going to be able to make that play over to first base for the first out of the bottom of the seventh. The second batter of this inning. Like I said before, it's going to be Massimo Cipriano. We'll see if he's able to start off the offense there. First pitch to him is going to be in there for a strike. And Schalmer's been demanding, commanding the zone all day. He's been getting the pitches that he wants. Really kind of forcing it with that fastball. And it's just been working. He's just blowing by the Port Jeff batters. That's just something that they're going to be able to, they're going to have to kind of work on. Because it's not like Schaltmer is kind of just overpowering them. It's not like he's throwing also these pitches with crazy movement or anything like that. He's kind of just challenging the batters, saying, hey, here's my stuff. Now, you know, go and hit it. With that being said, Massimo is going to ground over to first base. It's going to hop over the bag. And it's going to be in there for the second out of the inning. And the Port Jeff Royals are down to the final out of their game. Now with this final out, we're going to see... Rory trying to prevent the game from ending. See if he can start maybe a two-out rally to get the Royals back into this game here. Obviously, it's going to be... It would be one one miracle if, if the Royals were able to come back into this game. And that first pitch is going to clip that outside corner and he's going to get that called strike. For the first strike. Second pitch, second fastball. And... You really want to see the Royals, and I'll talk about this after the game, you really want to see the Royals kind of be more aggressive here because he's giving them pitches to hit here. The third pitch of the at-bat, another fastball. That one's actually going to be low to make the count one and two. Next pitch, Shelton throws. It's going to be a fastball. And Rory's able to fight that one off, foul it off. <laughs> and on the backswing, it seemed to... Maybe he had hit the catcher there on that backswing. Just making sure everyone's okay. Next pitch of the at-bat. Schaltmer's going to throw another fastball. He's gonna, Rory's going to ground it over to the third. Third baseman's going to make the play over to first. And that's going to do it for this game. The Royals fall 10 to 1 in this game, and the score doesn't really tell the entire story story of this game. Most of the game was pretty close.
but the highlights of the game all have to go to Mr. Schultmer, number seven of Bayport, who had a monstrous, monstrous three home run performance today and really stapled in that win for Bayport Blue Point. So now things to look forward to for the Royals. You, like I said, my final thoughts on this game, you really want to see the Royals kind of show some aggressiveness out there. They're, they're getting a lot of counts, and they're, they're not swinging at it. They're getting pitches to hit as well, so you really want to see them attack more in the next game. Maybe that's something they work on in practice. We will see. Guys, if you want to put your stuff on the field, go ahead. So their next game is going to be on Wednesday here. They're going to be playing against John Glenn, and they're going to be a, they're going to be home once again. But this time we're going to be able to actually show you that visual, which I'm super excited about. We're going to be able to see that. But for now, the Royals fall 10-1 to and drops their record overall 0-2. And for Port Jeff Royals Baseball, my name is Gabe Zoda, and I will see you guys next time.